Alcoholics Anonymous, Wikipedia article audio. Alcoholics Anonymous is an international mutual aid fellowship founded in 1935 by Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob Smith in Akron, Ohio. AA's stated primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics achieve sobriety. With other early members, Bill Wilson and Bob Smith developed AA's 12-step program of spiritual and character development. AA's initial 12 traditions were introduced in 1946 to help the fellowship be stable and unified while disengaged from outside issues and influences. The traditions recommend that members remain anonymous in public media, altruistically help other alcoholics, and that AA groups avoid official affiliations with other organizations. They also advise against dogma and coercive hierarchies. Subsequent fellowships such as Narcotics Anonymous have adopted and adapted the 12 steps and the 12 traditions to their respective primary purposes. Oxford Group Origins The Big Book, The 12 Steps and the 12 Traditions The first female member, Florence Rankin, joined AA in March 1937, and the first non-Protestant member, a Roman Catholic, joined in 1939. The first black AA group was established in 1945 in Washington, D.C. by Jim S., an African-American physician from Virginia. AA membership has since spread internationally across diverse cultures holding different beliefs and values including geopolitical areas resistant to grassroots movements. Close to 2 million people worldwide are members of AA as of 2016. AA's name is derived from its first book, informally called The Big Book, originally titled Alcoholics Anonymous, the story of how more than 100 men have recovered from alcoholism. AA sprang from the Oxford Group, a non-denominational movement modeled after first-century Christianity. Some members founded the group to help in maintaining sobriety. Grouper Ebby Thatcher was Wilson's former drinking buddy who approached Wilson saying that he had got religion, was sober, and that Wilson could do the same if he set aside objections to religion and instead formed a personal idea of God, another power or higher power. Feeling a kinship of common suffering and, though drunk, Wilson attended his first group gathering. Within days, Wilson admitted himself to the Charles B. Towns Hospital after drinking four beers on the way the last alcohol he ever drank. Under the care of Dr. William Duncan Silkworth, Wilson's detox included the deliriant belladonna. At the hospital a despairing Wilson experienced a bright flash of light, which he felt to be God revealing himself. Following his hospital discharge Wilson joined the Oxford group and recruited other alcoholics to the group. Wilson's early efforts to help others become sober were ineffective, prompting Dr. Silkworth to suggest that Wilson place less stress on religion and more on the science of treating alcoholism. Wilson's first success came during a business trip to Akron, Ohio, where he was introduced to Dr. Robert Smith, a surgeon and Oxford Group member who was unable to stay sober. After 30 days of working with Wilson, Smith drank his last drink on June 10, 1935, the date marked by AA for its anniversaries. While Wilson and Smith credited their sobriety to working with alcoholics under the auspices of the Oxford Group, a group associate pastor sermonized against Wilson and his alcoholic groupers for forming a secret, ashamed subgroup engaged in divergent works. By 1937, Wilson separated from the Oxford Group. AA historian Ernest Kurtz described the split. Organization and Finances More and more, 
Bill discovered that new adherents could get sober by believing in each other and in the strength of this group. Men who had proven over and over again, by extremely painful experience, that they could not get sober on their own had somehow become more powerful when two or three of them worked on their common problem. This, then whatever it was that occurred among them was what they could accept as a power greater than themselves. They did not need the Oxford group. In 1955, Wilson acknowledged AA's debt, saying the Oxford groupers had clearly shown us what to do. And just as importantly, we learned from them what not to do. Among the Oxford group practices that AA retained were informal gatherings, a changed life developed through stages, and working with others for no material gain, AA's analogues for these are meetings, the steps, and sponsorship. AA's tradition of anonymity was a reaction to the publicity-seeking practices of the Oxford group, as well as AA's wish to not promote, Wilson said, erratic public characters who through broken anonymity might get drunk and destroy confidence in us. Program To share their method, Wilson and other members wrote the initially titled book, Alcoholics Anonymous, the story of how more than 100 men have recovered from alcoholism, from which AA drew its name. Informally known as the Big Book, it suggests a 12-step program in which members admit that they are powerless over alcohol and need help from a higher power. They seek guidance and strength through prayer and meditation from God or a higher power of their own understanding take a moral inventory with care to include resentments, list and become ready to remove character defects, list and make amends to those harmed, continue to take a moral inventory, pray, meditate, and try to help other alcoholics recover. The second half of the book, Personal Stories, is made of AA members' redemptive autobiographical sketches. In 1941, interviews on American radio and favorable articles in U.S. magazines, including a piece by Jack Alexander in the Saturday Evening Post, led to increased book sales and membership. By 1946, as the growing fellowship quarreled over structure, purpose and authority, as well as finances and publicity, Wilson began to form and promote what became known as AA's 12 Traditions, which are guidelines for an altruistic, unaffiliated, non-coercive, and non-hierarchical structure that limited AA's purpose to only helping alcoholics on a non-professional level while shunning publicity. Eventually he gained formal adoption and inclusion of the 12 Traditions in all future editions of the Big Book. At the 1955 conference in St. Louis, Missouri, Wilson relinquished stewardship of AA to the General Service Conference, as AA grew to millions of members internationally. AA says it is not organized in the formal or political sense, and Bill Wilson called it a benign anarchy. In Ireland, Shane Butler said that AA looks like it couldn't survive as there's no leadership or top-level telling local cumans what to do, but it has worked and proved itself extremely robust. Butler explained that AA's inverted pyramid style of governance has helped it to avoid many of the pitfalls that political and religious institutions have encountered since it was established here in 1946. Meetings in 2006, AA counted 1,867,212 members and 106,202 AA groups worldwide. The 12 traditions informally guide how individual AA groups function, and the 12 concepts for world service guide how the organization is structured globally. Confidentiality a member who accepts a service position or an organizing role as a trusted servant with terms rotating and limited, 
typically lasting three months to two years and determined by group vote and the nature of the position. Each group is a self-governing entity with AA World Services acting only in an advisory capacity. AA is served entirely by alcoholics, except for seven non-alcoholic friends of the Fellowship of the 21-member AA Board of Trustees. Spirituality AA groups are self-supporting, relying on voluntary donations from members to cover expenses. The AA General Service Office limits contributions to $3,000 a year. Above the group level, AA may hire outside professionals for services that require specialized expertise or full-time responsibilities. Like individual groups, the GSO is self-supporting. AA receives proceeds from books and literature that constitute more than 50% of the income for its general service office. In keeping with A.A.S. seventh tradition, the central office is fully self-supporting through the sale of literature and related products, and through the voluntary donations of AA members and groups. It does not accept donations from people or organizations outside of AA. Disease Concept of Alcoholism In keeping with A.A.S. 8th tradition, the central office employs special workers who are compensated financially for their services, but their services do not include traditional 12th step work of working with alcoholics in need. All 12th step calls that come to the central office are handed to sober AA members who have volunteered to handle these calls. It also maintains service centers, which coordinate activities such as printing literature, responding to public inquiries, and organizing conferences. Other international general service offices are independent of AA World Services in New York. AA's program extends beyond abstaining alcohol. Its goal is to effect enough change in the alcoholic's thinking to bring about recovery from alcoholism through an entire psychic change, or spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening is meant to be achieved by taking the 12 steps, and sobriety is furthered by volunteering for AA and regular AA meeting attendance or contact with AA members. Members are encouraged to find an experienced fellow alcoholic, called a sponsor, to help them understand and follow the AA program. The sponsor should preferably have experience of all 12 of the steps, be the same sex as the sponsored person, and refrain from imposing personal views on the sponsored person. Following the helper therapy principle, Sponsors in AA may benefit from their relationship with their charges, as helping behaviors correlate with increased abstinence and lower probabilities of binge drinking. AA's program is an inheritor of counter-enlightenment philosophy. AA shares the view that acceptance of one's inherent limitations is critical to finding one's proper place among other humans and God. Such ideas are described as counter-enlightenment because they are contrary to the Enlightenment's ideal that humans have the capacity to make their lives and societies a heaven on earth using their own power and reason. After evaluating AA's literature and observing AA meetings for 16 months, Sociologists David R. Rudy and Arthur L. Greel found that for an AA member to remain sober a high level of commitment is necessary. This commitment is facilitated by a change in the member's worldview. To help members stay sober AA must, they argue, provide an all-encompassing worldview while creating and sustaining an atmosphere of transcendence in the organization. To be all-encompassing AA's ideology places an emphasis on tolerance rather than on a narrow religious worldview that could make the organization unpalatable to potential members and thereby limit its effectiveness. AA's emphasis on the spiritual nature of its program, however, is necessary to institutionalize a feeling of transcendence. 
A tension results from the risk that the necessity of transcendence, if taken too literally, would compromise AA's efforts to maintain a broad appeal. As this tension is an integral part of AA, Rudy and Greel argue that AA is best described as a quasi-religious organization. AA meetings are quasi-ritualized therapeutic sessions run by and for alcoholics. They are usually informal and often feature discussions. Local AA directories list a variety of weekly meetings. Those listed as closed are available to those with a self-professed desire to stop drinking, which cannot be challenged by another member on any grounds. Open meetings are available to anyone. At speaker meetings, one or two members tell their stories while discussion meetings allocate the most time for general discussion. Some meetings are devoted to studying and discussing the AA literature. AA meetings do not exclude other alcoholics, though some meetings cater to specific demographics such as gender, profession, age, sexual orientation, or culture. Meetings in the United States are held in a variety of languages including Armenian, English, Farsi, Finnish, French, Japanese, Korean, Russian, and Spanish. While AA has pamphlets that suggest meeting formats, groups have the autonomy to hold and conduct meetings as they wish except in matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole. Different cultures affect ritual aspects of meetings but around the world many particularities of the AA meeting format can be observed at almost any AA gathering. Canadian and United States Demographics U.S. courts have not extended the status of privileged communication, such as that enjoyed by clergy and lawyers, to AA-related communications between members. Effectiveness a study found an association between an increase in attendance to AA meetings with increased spirituality and a decrease in the frequency and intensity of alcohol use. The research also found that AA was effective at helping agnostics and atheists become sober. The authors concluded that though spirituality was an important mechanism of behavioral change for some alcoholics, it was not the only effective mechanism. Since the mid-1970s, a number of agnostic or no-prayer AA groups have begun across the U.S., Canada, and other parts of the world, which hold meetings that adhere to a tradition allowing alcoholics to freely express their doubts or disbelief that spirituality will help their recovery, and forego use of opening or closing prayers. There are online resources listing AA meetings for atheists and agnostics. Alcoholics Anonymous, the story of how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism. 2011. ISBN 1 893007 16 2. 575 pages. Also available in libraries 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. 2002. ISBN 0-916856-01-1192 pages Also available in libraries, home page The AA Grapevine Alcoholics Anonymous ISSN 0362-2584 Archived from the original on April 3, 2009 also available in libraries. More informally than not, AA's membership has helped popularize the disease concept of alcoholism, though AA officially has had no part in the development of such postulates which had appeared as early as the late 18th century. Though AA initially avoided the term disease, in 1973 conference-approved literature categorically stated that we had the disease of alcoholism. Regardless of official positions, 
from AA's inception most members have believed alcoholism to be a disease. Though cautious regarding the medical nature of alcoholism, AA has let others voice opinions. The big book states that alcoholism is an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. Ernest Kurtz says this is the closest the book Alcoholics Anonymous comes to a definition of alcoholism. In his introduction to the big book, Non-member Dr. William Silkworth said those unable to moderate their drinking have an allergy. Addressing the allergy concept, AA said the doctor's theory that we have an allergy to alcohol interests us. As layman, our opinion as to its soundness may, of course, mean little. But as ex-problem drinkers, we can say that his explanation makes good sense. It explains many things for which we cannot otherwise account. AA later acknowledged that alcoholism is not a true allergy, the experts now inform us. Wilson explained in 1960 why AA had refrained from using the term disease. We AAS have never called alcoholism a disease because, technically speaking, it is not a disease entity. For example, there is no such thing as heart disease. Instead there are many separate heart ailments or combinations of them. It is something like that with alcoholism. Therefore, we did not wish to get in wrong with the medical profession by pronouncing alcoholism a disease entity. Hence, we have always called it an illness or a malady a far safer term for us to use. Relationship with institutions Hospitals Prisons United States Court Rulings AA's New York General Service Office regularly surveys AA members in North America. Its 2014 survey of over 6,000 members in Canada and the United States concluded that, in North America, AA members who responded to the survey were 62% male and 38% female. Average member sobriety is slightly under 10 years with 36% sober more than 10 years, 13% sober from 5 to 10 years, 24% sober from 1 to 5 years, and 27% sober less than 1 year. Before coming to AA, 63% of members received some type of treatment or counseling, such as medical, psychological, or spiritual. After coming to AA, 59% received outside treatment or counseling. Of those members, 84% said that outside help played an important part in their recovery. The same survey showed that AA received 32% of its membership from other members, another 32% from treatment facilities, 30% were self-motivated to attend AA, 12% of its membership from court-ordered attendance, and only 1% of AA members decided to join based on information obtained from the Internet. People taking the survey were allowed to select multiple answers for what motivated them to join AA. Studies of AA's efficacy have produced inconsistent results. While some studies have suggested an association between AA attendance and increased abstinence or other positive outcomes, other studies have not. The Surgeon General of the United States 2016 Report on Alcohol, Drugs, and Health states well-supported scientific evidence demonstrates the effectiveness of 12-step mutual aid groups focused on alcohol and 12-step facilitation interventions. Many AA meetings take place in treatment facilities. Carrying the message of AA into hospitals was how the co-founders of AA first remained sober. They discovered great value of working with alcoholics who are still suffering, and that even if the alcoholic they were working with did not stay sober, they did. Bill Wilson wrote, 
practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. Bill Wilson visited Towns Hospital in New York City in an attempt to help the alcoholics who were patients there in 1934. At St. Thomas Hospital in Akron, Ohio, Smith worked with still more alcoholics. In 1939, a New York mental institution, Rockland State Hospital, was one of the first institutions to allow AA hospital groups. Service to corrections and treatment facilities used to be combined until the General Service Conference, in 1977, voted to dissolve its institution's committee and form two separate committees, one for treatment facilities, and one for correctional facilities. In the United States and Canada, AA meetings are held in hundreds of correctional facilities. The AA General Service Office has published a workbook with detailed recommendations for methods of approaching correctional facility officials with the intent of developing an in-prison AA program. In addition, AA publishes a variety of pamphlets specifically for the incarcerated alcoholic. Additionally, the AA General Service Office provides a pamphlet with guidelines for members working with incarcerated alcoholics. American Treatment Industry United States courts have ruled that inmates, parolees, and probationers cannot be ordered to attend AA. Though AA itself was not deemed a religion, it was ruled that it contained enough religious components to make coerced attendance at AA meetings a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment of the Constitution. In 2007, the Ninth Circuit of the U.S. Court of Appeals stated that a parolee who was ordered to attend AA had standing to sue his parole office. In 1949, the Hazelden Treatment Center was founded and staffed by AA members, and since then many alcoholic rehabilitation clinics have incorporated AA's precepts into their treatment programs. 32% of AA's membership was introduced to it through a treatment facility. A cross-sectional survey of substance misuse treatment providers in the West Midlands found fewer than 10% integrated 12-step methods in their practice and only a third felt their consumers were suited for Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous membership. Less than half were likely to recommend self-help groups to their clients. Providers with nursing qualifications were more likely to make such referrals than those without them. A statistically significant correlation was found between providers' self-reported level of spirituality and their likelihood of recommending AA or NA. United Kingdom Treatment Industry Criticism Thirteenth Stepping Thirteenth Stepping is a pejorative term for AA members approaching new members for dates or sex. The Journal of Addiction Nursing reported that 50% of the women that participated in a survey experienced 13-stepping behavior from others. AA's pamphlet on sponsorship suggests that men be sponsored by men and women be sponsored by women. Stanton Peel argued that some AA groups apply the disease model to all problem drinkers, whether or not they are full-blown alcoholics. Along with Nancy Shute, Peel has advocated that besides AA, other options should be readily available to those problem drinkers who are able to manage their drinking with the right treatment. The big book says moderate drinkers and a certain type of hard drinker are able to stop or moderate their drinking. The big book suggests no program for these drinkers, but instead seeks to help drinkers without power of choice in drink. One review of AA warned of detrimental iatrogenic effects of 12-step philosophy and concluded that AA uses many methods that are also used by cults. A subsequent study concluded, however, 
that AA's program bore little resemblance to religious cults because the techniques used appeared beneficial. Another study found that the AA program's focus on admission of having a problem increases deviant stigma and strips members of their previous cultural identity, replacing it with the deviant identity. A survey of group members, however, found they had a bicultural identity and saw AA's program as a complement to their other national, ethnic, and religious cultures. Alcoholics Anonymous publishes several books, reports, pamphlets, and other media, including a periodical known as the AA Grapevine. Two books are used primarily, Alcoholics Anonymous and Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, the latter explaining AA's fundamental principles in depth. The full text of each of these two books is available on the AA website at no charge. Moderation or Abstinence Cultural Identity Literature AA in Film Films about Alcoholic Anonymous Films where primary plotline includes AA Notes